The malaria parasite lives inside every blood cell in the human host and to be able to cause disease and to acquire its nutrients for survival it basically needs to export around about 300 of its proteins from within the parasite into the red blood cell and onto the red blood cell surface. And these proteins do numerous things. They enable the red blood cell to become more rigid. So instead of the infected red blood cell normally being cleared by the spleen, the parasites become sticky and they adhere to the capillaries within our vasculature. The second thing is the proteins that are on the red blood cell surface enable the parasite to evade the immune response. So it tricks the immune response such that it can no longer recognise the, the parasites and clear them. So the big question is how do malaria parasites export their proteins into the red blood cell? And together with my colleagues at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute and the Burnett Institute, we've discovered a novel machinery that basically exists at the interface between the parasite and the red blood cell that is involved in the trafficking of these proteins out into the red blood cell um, cytosol and onto the red blood cell surface. This is a very exciting discovery because if it's involved in the export of up to 300 proteins, it provides a real Achilles um, heel for the malaria parasite and a key target for anti-malaria uh, chemotherapeutic intervention. So what we're currently trying to do is unravel the me mechanisms how this machinery works to export these proteins and trying to identify which of these components of the machinery would provide great targets for which we can develop drugs to block this machinery. So instead of a normal anti-malaria drug having a single target that the malaria parasite can um, mutate and eventually become resistant to, by developing drugs to this machinery that enables the machinery to be blocked, what in effect we're doing is trying to block the export of a whole heap of proteins, hundreds and hundreds of proteins. So this will have severe implications for not only uh, parasite uh, virulence, but it potentially also affect parasite survival. And we're also very much interested in how these components of this machinery contribute to the ability of the malaria parasite to cause disease. So they're just some of the things we're undertaking um, in our research at Deakin University.